I know. <laughs> I'll give you a little intro, and okay. we'll, we'll let you start. All right. Again, we might know him as the Food Network Star Season 8 finalist, the Chicago native CEO and executive chef of Healthy Infused Cuisine. He studied at the world-renowned Le Cordon Bleu and the Ritz. He is known as the architect of flavor. He has been named by Spice Giant McCormick as one of their 125 global flavor experts. Introduced his signature all-purpose, all-natural chef blend hot sauce, and he is now author with his brand new cookbook, The Spice Eye. Please welcome Chef Judson, Todd Allen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. How's everybody doing? Okay, I, every time I do a demo, I always do this. Um, so on the count of three, I want you all to scream to the, like, I want you all to scream at your loudest. Just because I want people to know that we're having fun back here, right? So I'm accounting. I know y'all looking at me like, no, he didn't. It is lunchtime. I haven't eaten or I'm eating. Yeah, y'all gonna scream during lunchtime. So, on the count of three, I want you all to just scream and get so excited about this demonstration. Can you do that for me? Really? One, two, three. Woo! Okay, okay, okay. I know that's not as loud as y'all can get, but. <laughs> all right, again, my name is Chef Judson Todd Allen. I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, uh, born and raised here on the South Side. Um, and what I'm going to do today is talk to you all a little bit about my story, a little bit about my journey through food, why I got into it, and then I'm going to get in the kitchen. Okay, is that all right? Very different probably when others have done, but again, I want to share with you why food is so important to me and why food actually saved my life, right? So uh, ever since I was a little kid, I struggled with uh, weight issues. I struggled with uh, what I call now a food addiction. When I was younger, I did not know that I had an addiction to food. I just knew that I used to dream about food. I used to like dream about the flavors. I used to dream about everything when it came to food. And I would get up in the middle of the night and I would find myself kind of getting up and kind of ransacking the refrigerator. And I would eat and eat and eat and eat. And I did not realize back then that this compulsive nature that I had with food, this passion, this true love for food, was really, again, an addiction. And that addiction carried through my high school years and carried through my college years. And when I got to college, how many of you all have heard of uh, Freshman 15? How many of you all got Freshman 15 when you went to school? <laughs> So when I went to school, I actually gained over 70 pounds my first year in college. And the reason why I did that is because I never really fully came to the uh, conclusion that I had an addiction to food. I never realized that, look, th I need to stop this, right? I went to college and I had access to something 24 hours a day. I had access to food all the time. So I turned to food as a coping mechanism. I turned to food as that comfort zone for me. And again, my weight escalated. By the time I graduated, I went to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign where I majored in food science and engineering. Yeah, go figure. This big guy majoring in food science, right? Um, I graduated an astounding close to 400 pounds. And I remember getting a photo of my, gradu my graduation photo of myself. And I remember looking at myself at that 400 pound person and tears began to run. And I began to play the blame game. I blamed everybody but myself, right? And I came to the, again, that was the point that I came to the realization that I had an addiction to food and that I had to make a change for myself. I had to go on a healthier lifestyle journey for myself because I did not want to be there. All around, all through this time, I had struggled with things like uh, borderline diabetes, borderline hypertension. I never fully got those diseases, but I was borderline. So I told myself, it's time for me to make a change. After I graduated, I embarked on a healthier lifestyle journey for myself. And I said, you know what? The only way I'm gonna do this is by introducing good food to my diet, not the greasy food that was in a greasy bag that I really loved back in the day, but really fresh quality ingredients. But it had to be flavorful. There was no way I was going to take this healthier lifestyle journey for myself if the food was not flavorful, okay? So I did that. I introduced different spices. I introduced different ingredients and herbs to my food. And it really transformed how I thought and felt about healthy food, right? So the cool thing is, in my first year embarking on this journey, I lost close to 100 pounds. 
And then I've lost a total weight of over this 14 year period of close to over 170 plus pounds. And thank you. And I did it again by introducing spices and introducing flavor to healthier food. Again, transforming how I thought and felt about what healthy food was. So today, that's what it's all about. Today I'm introducing to you all healthy food, but most importantly, flavorful food, right? One, one of those things that you can do at home that's easy, that's simple, that's quick. And that's what I'm gonna be introducing to you all, okay? Is that cool? All right. So, what are we gonna do today? Okay, now this is my favorite, my grandfather, who is my inspiration for all things cooking. I'm telling you, my granddaddy is that guy. He grew up in New Orleans, he's French Creole, and he taught me at a very young age how to really architect flavors. That's kinda how I got this name, architect of flavor. But I really give a nod to granddad who really taught me everything that I know. So today, I'm going to be showing you all how to do a New Orleans pecan-crusted catfish. Yeah, I'm, okay. Um, I should be rolling in the back of your heads. Y'all should be like, oh my gosh. I'm telling you, this is going to be so flavorful. And the reason why I did this dish is because I used to be addicted to fried catfish. Like, I'm telling you all, I used to love me some fried catfish and grits. And only my granddaddy's fried catfish and grits. But I realized that as I was embarking on this healthier journey for myself, I had to limit my fried foods. So I used things like nuts, and I'm using pecans today. And I used other ingredients to build in those flavors to give me the same texture, but without all the fat and the calories. What am I pairing it with? I'm doing a simple green bean salad for you all. Amazing. Fresh ingredients like chickpeas and lemon juice, a little bit of red wine vinegar. I'm telling you, this recipe is gonna be simple. You're gonna be able to do it at home. It's not expensive, and it's gonna be really good. All right, you ready to get started? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, all right, all right, all right. So one thing, I'm going to grab a bowl. Can I get a bowl, uh, a metal, um, um, clear bowl? All right, so this is really cool. The first thing you want to do whenever you're working with uh, recipes or whenever you're working at home, working with different ingredients, you want quality ingredients, okay? That is the name of the game. Get really good quality ingredients. So we're using a catfish here, and this is a farm-raised catfish that we got. Um, what I like to do with my catfish first, take a little bit of olive oil, and I'm getting my bowl, woo! Okay, let's see. I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to take this one. Thank you. All right. So, one thing I like to do with my catfish first, I'll take a little bit of my olive oil, and I'll put a little bit of olive oil on my catfish, just like this. Can you all see? Awesome. Now my spices. I give this actual spice blend in my book. It's my Cajun spice blend. Cool thing is it doesn't have any salt in it. The recipes that I use in my book don't have sugar, salt, they have low fat, no processed foods, okay? So you're gonna see all of that here today, right? So again, a Cajun spice, super simple. We're using things like cayenne and thyme, right? Garlic powder, onion powder. I give you the recipe, but this is like my holy grail, you all, I'm telling you. I use this on everything. It's all purpose, right? I like spicy food. If you're not a spicy person, then you don't have to add as much as I would. <laughs> but I like to add a little bit of that spice to the fish first, right? And I'll take my hands, and remember we put that olive oil there, and I like to just rub that in with that oil. And it's called massaging your food. You know what I mean? You gotta, okay, no kids in there. You gotta make love to your food, right? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all about the process, you know? Get in there. That way, you know, after the food is done, the food is, you know, you, you and that food have a mutual bond, you know? It's like, I'm gonna be good no matter what, you know? <laughs> So we kind of massage that spice in that catfish with that oil. And I'll let that sit a towel. 
and we'll let that sit, right? So what we'll do is we'll massage all that in there and we're just gonna let it sit for a few minutes. And you can put this kind of in your refrigerator if you want to. All right, so next, oh, here they are. <laughs> so next, we're gonna work on the crust, right? And the pecan crust is really the star of this dish. All right. So I like to take some pecans here, and you can call them pecans depending on where you're from, but I love taking these pecans, and you wanna crush them, right? So taking these, and just a very simple way to crush these. Where's my knife, my knife, my knife, my knife. I should know where my knife is. It's behind me. Okay. Okay, let me see which one I want. Uh, nope, not that one, not that one. I need a big one. Yeah. Chef knife, yep, yep. So with the, with the pecans, making sure that you run your knife through those pecans, getting them really fine. And this is what you want. Can you all see this? Okay. So you want those really fine nuts because again, this is gonna be the crust for the catfish, right? If you have those big chunks, then you have to eat those big chunks. Thank you, sweetheart. Then you have those really big chunks, right? And you don't really want that. So just a very simple way, taking your knife, I like to just run my knife through those nuts. And again, I like it finer because it just forms a better crust, right? Very simple, very simple. And I'm just gonna add a few more of those in there. Now what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of Parmesan Reggiano cheese. How many of you all are in love with Parmesan Reggiano cheese? I know I am. This is like the best cheese you can buy, I'm telling you. So a little bit goes a long way. I know folks say, Chef, you're using cheese and you wrote a spice diet book. I mean, what's up with that, you know? I tell people a little goes a long way, really. So just take a little bit of your Parmesan and add it to your crust. And what that does is it really helps for that to bind and the flavor is amazing. Remember, we're not adding salt to this dish, right? So the easiest way to get salt in your cooking is by using ingredients that have natural saltiness to them, right? Like Parmesan. A little bit of this Cajun spice, right? I know you say, chef, we put it on the catfish, look. You can never over flavor your food. Actually, you can, but bring in the flavor, bring in the spice. So we add in some of that spice. Awesome. How many of y'all love working with fresh herbs? Yeah, these are like the best things. So we're gonna add some parsley to this. And the parsley is just a nice, adds a nice freshness to this dish. It really, to me, livens the dish. So I'm gonna add some parsley. Why not? How many of y'all have herb gardens in your back, backyard or in your house? Really? I'm a fanatic of them. Even if you don't have the space for them, right? You know, rooftop gardens are like a huge thing now, right? Also, because I'm in a condo, I just put one on my, on my windowsill. So I get to grow my own fresh herbs. I'll grow, in the summertime, I'll grow my own uh, peppers, right? It's cheap, and you have access to it whenever you want it, so. And as much as I cook, I'm like, that's the best thing for me. But I told myself, the next house I get is definitely gonna have either a farm or a garden attached to it. And I don't know about the farm because I am a true city boy, so <laughs> I had to have somebody to help me out. <laughs> so we add a little bit of that parsley. Can you all see that? Again, we're forming the crust, right? All the ingredients for the crust. Also, lemon zest. How many of you all are, love the lemon zest, right? That's where your flavor lies. Because of the natural oils, right? A lot of your flavor lies in that zest. So whenever you're buying lemons and you juice them, please don't get rid of them, use your zest. So we're gonna add some zest to this. 
And this is gonna, again, brighten the dish, right? Give it a little bit of the acidity that we're looking for. And lemon and fish just pair so perfectly together, right? All right, so then what I do is I take a little bit of my olive oil and I'll just put a little bit of oil in there to help bind it. And again, because I like to play with my food, I'll take my hands instead of a spoon. That's when you know you're doing something right, you know. All right, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna, give you all this so you can smell it. As simple as this is, you all, look at that. You smell it? Now I'm not gonna walk with everybody. I'm gonna tell you that now. <laughs> but I will let you all pass it down so you all can look at it while I move on. Is that cool? So this right here is the crust, right? And the cool thing about it is it was simple, it was easy, but you can literally use this crust for anything. You can use it for the catfish that we're doing. You can use it for chicken if you wanted to, right? And again, put it on there, it bakes, it forms a beautiful crust on top and it is amazing. And um, when you all are done, bring it back because I gotta use it for the catfish. <laughs> awesome. So, that was easy, right? I'm going to bring back our beautiful catfish. All right, where are we with the crust? <laughs> you all can... <laughs> They are marveled over the crust. Again, the crust is actually in the book, uh, in my book, The Spice Diet. Um, again, perfect with chicken. Uh, another great uh, substitution for catfish, if you're not a catfish lover, would be salmon. This would be perfect with salmon. Oh my gosh. And actually pairing the salmon with the beans and the chickpea salad that we're gonna do is the perfect pair. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> And that was, e that was easy, wasn't it, right? So just imagine it on the fish. So what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of that crust that we made and we're gonna pack it on top of our catfish like this. Can you all see this? Okay. And again, because we've added that oil because we've added the cheese, right? That's gonna bind and adhere to that fish so nicely. Remember, we didn't use any salt with this, did we? No salt, no sugar. But yet the flavor profile of this is gonna be, I mean, it's gonna be mind blowing. And you'll realize that, hey, we don't, we don't really need this salt every day in our diet, you know? Or if we're using salt, we're getting it from natural, you know, from the natural things that have natural saltiness to them. Uh, we'll use this last bit for this guy. How does that look? Awesome. All right, so we're gonna put this in the oven. And because this is gonna go really, really quick, we put it in a 400 degree oven. And again, the, you know, this is a very thinner, this is a thinner piece of catfish. So it's not gonna take so long, right, to cook. And we want a beautiful golden crust on that catfish, on the uh, crust, all right? And no? Here we go. There you go. <laughs> Voila. All right, so let's get started with the beans. How many of you all love green beans? 
Oh my gosh, these are like the best things. One thing that I do is I'll like blanch these guys. And, and now this isn't the recipe I'm doing, but I'm just gonna give you a, a really simple, easy recipe that I do with my green beans. I like to blanch these guys. And then what I'll do is I'll take some of my spice blends out of my book, right? Or any spice blends that you have at home. Do a little bit of oil, toss them, put them in the oven, take them out. They're kind of crispy, they've dried, the spices have adhered, and I just eat them like chips, right? Another great recipe that I have in my book is called a Brussels sprout chip. These are what I call like uh, potato chips of the garden, right? I mean like, okay, clearly nothing to, you know, potato chip, garden, I get it, you know, whatever. But the next best thing is a Brussels sprout and a green bean, okay, if you're going healthy, right? But they're so good and they're so flavorful. And you can munch on them, right? Watching a movie instead of going for the cheese popcorn, go for the, Jamaica jerk spice green beans, right? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Hopefully I'm converting some of you all to believers. <laughs> so we're gonna take these green beans and we're gonna drop them in the boiling water, right? Very easy. We'll just take a few of those guys. And we really want to blanch these. And then after we blanch these, we're going to shock them in the cold water. Okay? Again, we want that beautiful, vibrant color. I love my beans al dente. I don't like a vegetable that is like the life of it is completely cooked out of it. You know? I can't deal with that. So we just really want to blanch these guys. All right, we'll give that just a few more minutes. Yeah. So in building, in building this actual dish, again, another very, very simple process. I try to make my recipes super simple for people that are on the go, that don't have a lot of time, that can do this at home. So, we're gonna take this red onion because we're adding red onion to this dish. And one of the things that I like to do with my red onion is cut them in half moons, especially for this one, right? Because you still get this beautiful kind of red color. And remember, when you're cooking, it's all about making your food sexy. It's making it alive. It's making it beautiful, right? So you want all those different colors to pop. You don't want to overcook something where it becomes dull. You want everything to literally pop off the plate. We're going to take these guys out of this hot water. All right. And I'm gonna put this in the cold water to blanch them, to stop them from cooking. This is called the shocking process. How many of you all knew that? Okay. So I'll just go over that one more time about what I just did, okay? So with the green beans, we took our green beans, we put them in some hot water, right? And we wanna cook them very quickly. Right? We want to keep the beautiful, to keep the beautiful vibrant color, we tape them out of the hot water and we put them in an ice bath. And that's just shocking them to stop the cooking process. And that will give us this beautiful, beautiful green, green bean. And then again, they should be al dente, right? They should still kind of have a little bite to them. And that's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna let these guys chill out. And then let's check on this catfish really quickly. Now, oh my gosh, you smell that? No? What about now? Better? <laughs> it smells really good, trust me. All right, so with the green beans and building that, we're gonna add ingredients like our red onion. We're gonna add some sun-dried tomatoes to this. Again, these are things that I just thought of. Right, literally. 
Because, hey, you've got them in your refrigerator, you've got them in your cupboard, and you want to make them, right? Or you want to use them. So sun-dried tomatoes. A little bit of honey for sweetness. That sweetness is going to pair perfectly with the beans and the catfish in that crust. So it's all about making sure that your flavor profiles work together, right? You want everything to just bounce off of your mouth. A party in your mouth, right? We're going to add a little bit of vinegar to this because of the acidity, right? Whenever you have sweet, you want to have acidity, you want to have a little bit of the spice. All of those elements should be popping off the taste buds. A little bit of garlic because I just am in love with garlic and no one can take that away from me. I'm just in love with it. <laughs> so let's go ahead on and cut up this red onion. And again, we're doing half moons. And I like to cut my onion thin. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of having big thick chunks of onion in, in my dishes, you know? That's just me. Can you all see that? Again, a little bit of onion it goes a long way. And I tell people, hey, when you're eating garlic and onion, maybe you're on a date, hey, if you both eat it, it cancels out, you know? That's my, that's my rule of thumb. So we're gonna take our uh, sun-dried tomatoes. And again, these are packed in oil. You can also just find them that are just dehydrated, not dehydrated, but dried. And I like to kind of keep these with a little bit of consistency to them because I like biting into a really nice sun-dried tomato because it's sweet, right? It's savory. So these are just some elements that we're looking for. A little bit of our garlic. Clean this off. But I like to take the, the back of my knife. Very simple. And then I just rough chop this garlic. Can you all see that? And if you can do this on the cutting board with the oil, with the sun-dried tomatoes, it's like flavor heaven on this cutting board. And then you scoop that and you get it into the beans, it's like flavor heaven in your beans. Check on this fish really quickly. Oh my gosh, that's looking so good. Woo! You all are in for a treat. Also, we've got our honey. I'm gonna bring that over here. And also our vinegar. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this bowl right here. So with our green beans, I'm gonna take these straight out of our ice bath. And what I like to do with this dish, and actually in my restaurant at Taste 222 that I talked about earlier, I like to pair the, uh, the hot catfish with these kind of cool green beans, this room temperature cool green beans. It's something about this hot and cold that actually really works nicely, especially with this dish, okay? So we're gonna take our green beans, we're gonna add them to our bowl. Try not to get the ice like I did. <laughs> All right. So what we'll do is we'll take some of our onion, our red onion. We're going to take our sun-dried tomato. 
you see all these colors. You got the red. You've got the the uh, what color is this? Purple. Okay, I was gonna say violet, but <laughs> purple. We take our chickpeas. That's gonna just add a little bit of, it's gonna substantiate the dish, right? It's gonna add a little bit of starchiness to the dish, which always is nice when you're eating a complete meal. Take a little bit of this lemon juice. And then we're gonna go in with our vinegar. Not too much of the vinegar, but just enough. And a little bit of our honey. Remember for that sweetness to balance out the dish, we've got a lot of the uh, acidic notes in here. So just to balance this dish out, we're gonna use a little bit of the sweetness from the honey. Again, it pairs so nicely with that catfish and that crust. We'll use our tongs. And this is a chickpea salad to die for, chickpea and green bean salad to die for. Now I'm gonna let you all, I'm just gonna pass this around. Yeah. Just smell it. Oh my God, you smell the vinegar. The longer you let that stuff sit, the better. How does that smell? Isn't that amazing? All right. Super simple, super easy. Again, we use ingredients that you can just have at home on hand, you know? If you're not a sun-dried tomato fan and you, and you like roasted red peppers, right? Roasted red peppers would be fabulous with this dish. Um, if you, I, I'm a, I love capers, right? So capers would be fabulous with this dish as well, you know? Again, just getting you all to think about the variety, uh, the, the variety that you have access to when it comes to food, right? I tell people there's no rules when it comes to food. You'll know when you don't like something because you won't eat it or the person that you're cooking for won't eat it. But there's really no rules when it comes to food. Have fun with it. That is the fun thing about food. Now I'm going to wait for the green beans to come back and then I'm going to show you our plating and then we're going to get into some quick Q&A and then let you all smell the, and look at the final dish. While the beans are coming back, do we have any questions right now about what we did so far? vinegar you use like a tablespoon so vinegar so typically I would use about a half a teaspoon of vinegar um, depending on how many beans you're using about here I use about a half a teaspoon yeah yep again vinegar is very powerful and we also use the lemon juice in this as well um, so just keep that in mind uh, but the recipe uh, again is in the book and we'll also have the recipe available Maybe I'm, I'll have the recipe on my website, maybe. Or it's in the book, you'll just have to buy the book. How about that? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Let me see. Oh, she's, um, I'll use this one. All right, so 
and plating this dish, right? I like to take my green beans. Can you all see this? And I'll use this as the base for the catfish. All that flavor, all that cover, uh, color. So again, we use the green beans, the chickpeas, all of that as the base. And then we're gonna come with some of our catfish. And I like to just sit that catfish on top. Always clean it up because what? We want to make our food what? Look good. That's right. And of course, if you have some more of your zest, you can always top this with a little bit of your zest. And then just to top this off, because we've got a little extra Parmesan, right? Why not use a little extra Parmesan? I'm just saying, you know, just put a little bit of Parmesan on top like that. Finish it with a little bit of our fresh herbs. <laughs> Voila. And that was super easy, super simple, right? How long did it take us? Half an hour. Half an hour. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> super healthy. Oh, it's my microphone giving me feedback. Okay. Um, I'll sit this up here. Oh. I'll sit it over here. <laughs> Voila. So again, very simple, very easy recipe. Uh, one, of the, one of those things that you can do at home, right? You've got the ingredients, you can get the ingredients, you know where to find the ingredients, most importantly, right? And this is healthy for us. Healthy with bold flavor, flavors. And that is really uh, the type of cuisine that I like to play with. Uh, at our restaurant, you'll find a little bit of the healthy, you'll find some not so healthy on there too. You know, we've got mac and cheese, we've got shrimp and grits, uh, we've got some other amazing decadent dishes. Uh, but most importantly, uh, it's always important just to share with you all what you can do with food, how much fun you can have with food, and really to change people's perception about what healthy food really is. And again, it's all about using different spices, using different flavors, and using different ingredients, right? That can still give you the same effect that you're looking for with some of those rich, decadent dishes, but just in a more healthier way, right? So that's it. It's the New Orleans Pecan Crusty Catfish and the Green Bean and Chickpea Salad. Can I answer any questions or questions, questions about the recipes? question sure the name of your restaurant please. sure so I do um, actually I'd had the opportunity to uh, work with Don Thompson who's a former CEO of McDonald's Corporation and we opened a food and beverage incubator at, in downtown Chicago and what it is is it is a food incubator and investment firm but on our first floor we have a really cool restaurant and it's called taste 222. 
It's located in 222 North Canal. 222 North Canal, right in the River, um, River North, Fulton Market area. Um, but we do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We open at 7.30 in the a.m. and we close at 10 o'clock at night. We're Monday through Friday for right now, but we will be opening on weekends very soon, okay? But it's a great experience, trust me, you'll wanna go. And I'm just not saying that because I'm the, you know, came up with all the recipes and stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> other questions other questions maybe about the book about the style of cooking healthier cooking yes great question is everything in the book savory um no we've got some amazing desserts in there and these are really cool again very simple easy recipes for desserts but one of my favorite is the uh, peanut butter and chocolate coconut ice cream. Yeah. But we're not using heavy cream or sugar. Yeah. I will make that. Because when I tell you, it is so good. It is so amazing. And I, I, I can't recall the exact calorie intake, but if you want to check out the book, the recipe is actually in the book. Um, but the calories are low. The sugar content is low, and uh, it is tastes just like ice cream. I knew she was going to ask me that. So, so, so what are you using if you don't use What cake? are you using if you don't use sugar? So we're using banana, frozen banana, and we're using almond milk. Yep, unsweetened almond milk. Yep. And it's really good. It tastes just like ice cream. Uh, how do you ensure the consistency of the ice cream if you're not using any of that milk? Good question. So what we're using is we're using frozen bananas, which gives you the same consistency. And we're also using the almond milk. Yeah. So the bananas kind of act as that fat, right? And that bind. So it comes together just like ice cream. It's actually pretty cool. It's actually really cool. And we're using really fresh ingredients in it, right? So I use uh, really good quality organic peanut butter or almond butter, right? Low sugar or no sugar added, you know, pure. And we're using beautiful dark chocolate with it, you know, coconut. So these are things that have natural sweetness to them, right? But they're not like milk chocolate, which is really just a whole bunch of sugar and cocoa, you know? So... It's some, you know, I really encourage people to use really great ingredients and have fun with it, really, you know? So my book is actually, you can get it online at Amazon. You can purchase on Barnes & Noble. Uh, unfortunately, no, but um, I will be having events around Chicago and I will be all around the U.S. doing book signings. So depending on where you are, I may be in your city. You're in Jersey? Oh, I'll definitely be in Jersey. <laughs> I love Jersey. Yep, I do a lot in New York and in Jersey. So, yep. After graduating from the University of Illinois, you went on to culinary school? It's a great question. So my career pathway is a little different. I, uh, like I said, I went to University of Illinois and I majored in food science and engineering. And I did that because I wanted to be unique as a chef. Right? Because, like, how many chefs can say they're food scientists or engineers? Oh, you can. Oh, that is so cool. I love it. Okay. Well, we're here. So I said, let me be unique. Let me be different. So here's this inner city kid from Chicago going off and majoring in agriculture and food science. Had no idea what it was. I just knew it had something to do with food. Um, but fast forward my career, did a stint in corporate America, then decided to really go into my passion and my calling, which I knew was food. Had an opportunity to travel, move over to Europe, Paris, study at Le Cordon Bleu, and then just traveled around really understanding the European food, food culture, and then brought all of that back to, the, to Chicago, and then just found my food identity, my point of view, and the rest is history. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Chef. Thank you for having me. Round of applause, Chef right. Judson Todd Allen. Again, Taste 222, and go to his website, judsontoddallen.com, to pick up The Spice Diet, his brand new book. Sure. You can also follow him on Facebook, Chef Judson Todd Allen, and follow him on Instagram, Twitter, Judson Todd Allen. Folks, stick around, grab your seats.
Chef Fabio Vivi.